there is a lack of uh, historical context for, for trans people, which we actually see in the legislation as well. There's this notion that the, it's a new phenomenon, that trans people are a sudden trend that need to be combated, because we have this uh, continual historical forgetting. Uh, we don't know our own past. We don't know that we've been around, because we don't get to see those images. Um, what Sam's film really does is, is situate us today in a historical legacy. I think a lot about one specific idea, just this notion of, of who gets to play uh, trans people on screen. And I heard so many times from producers in Hollywood that, well, we have to put you know this particular star, this man, to play this trans woman uh, in order to get the film made and push the conversation forward. And one of the moments that we discuss in the film is that this practice has been going on you know, for, for over 40 years. And so uh, it, it's just this ahistorical reading. So let's talk about some of these films. And some of these films, as um, Sam uh, brings us in disclosure, were considered groundbreaking, especially around um, uh, trans life. You had The Crying Game of mm -hmm. 1992. You had Boys Don't Cry of 1999. But talk about what you felt was so critical, why they were such a turning point, but also problematic. I mean, The Crying Game's a wonderful example. I, I love that film. It's an absolutely beautiful film. There was something incredibly galvanizing and exciting about seeing that character on screen, because it was someone I could identify with. But there's also a, a profound— And can you, for people who haven't seen it, in a nutshell— Well, I think—are we allowed to spoil Crying Game now? It's been <laughs> some 20 years. <laughs> yes. Um, a, a character uh, falls for and starts dating this showgirl that he sees, and uh, in the moment of her disrobing as they're about to have sex, he realizes, you know, that she has a penis and is therefore really a man, and his response is to, you know, flee to the bathroom and aggressively vomit. And then this trope of men vomiting in response to the disclosure of a trans body has been repeated uh, endlessly in, in Ace Ventura and Family Guy over and over again. And for trans people ourselves, those images uh, just get placed in our brains and are really hard to dislodge. Uh, I, I've, I've dated men for many years, and that image was always running through my mind. Every time I went to disclose to someone that I was trans, that's the image in my head, is of, of a man responding and— Vomiting. Uh, vomiting, yeah, at, at the reality of my body, that that's an appropriate and, and common response, because that's the only response I had ever seen was on screen. <laughs> and, and so that's what I'm taught. And that's what the men are taught, that that's an appropriate reaction. That's what the whole world is taught is an appropriate reaction, that I'm a legitimate object of disgust. There is also the fascination with the trans body, and that's the part that I, I can uh, at least identify with in, in a somewhat positive way. There's a certain glamour and beauty on screen as well, but it's always coupled with this violent reaction. I think one of the Lar like one of the most ubiquitous tropes about us is the need uh, to disclose, right? That the onus is on us to reveal something about us that is a secret that no one else knows, that we're using, you know, to deceive, we're using to get to something, and that we have something to disclose, um, as if not everyone has information that doesn't need to be shared. Um, Jen talks about it really beautifully in the film, how, you know, it's, it's the idea of disclosure is really prioritizing someone else's experience over your own. Um, so that is such a rampant notion in most trans people's minds, um, and most conversations around trans lives is the idea of disclosure. Um, and so just that's why I wanted to call it that.